My expertise is to isolate them chemically, find that the components are pure, and once you have isolated them, we can make our own synergistic mixture to see now that it's made from natural product, not synthesis, as you know, it's endocannabinoids, then we want to demonstrate now that it's been separated, it, would it work or not? Would we get any response? Hey, welcome back. I'm here with Dr. Barrigal, who is a phenomenal speaker. You are doing incredible work in the area of research, the endocannabinoid system, and some of the unexplored areas, which is something that I personally find huge um, because I believe it's a preventative medicine. Uh, maybe tell us a bit about what you're doing. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. <laughs> My name is Dr. Mertat Barrigal. I'm the president of the QCL, Quality Compliance Laboratory. We are approved Health Canada and and registered and inspected by FDA laboratories for the last eight years. Our core business is to provide analytical testing and development to pharmaceutical industries. And since 2003, uh, we've been, 2013, we've been uh, approached by Health Canada to provide services to MMPR producers. And part of our work is as as well as identifying all the test requirements based on health care the mandates is to do more study on cannabis and the composition of it. Uh, as part of my own personal interest, we've been doing some work to isolate the cannabinoids because based on my past history and experience and education, uh, I am convinced that effect of medicinal effect of cannabis is not based on only CBD and THC, but it is a synergy effect of multi-components, including terpenes, and etc. And of course, the composition of THC and CBD is making difference on different people. But so far, there is no clear clinical studies by anybody, including the pharmaceutical companies that they claim to demonstrate that pure CBD or pure THC has any effect on their own. Most of the products which are in the market and its claim is based on the extract, and the extract it consists of all the multi components. So, uh, even, uh, even then, if I'm correct, it, it, you're a doctor, so I'm just, if I'm correct, I, they've only proven it for spasmaticity, or, I believe, for, mm -hmm. for CBD it, at best. Yes, and it, again, it, it's, the claim is going, and, and depending who you ask the question, they'll say, how good is cannabis for what? Right. It depends on the patient, you know, it, the same uh, strain can be used by you and you believe in something and it's good for you, but it could be by another patient for different remedy and they still have the same thing. So uh, there is a lot of uh, mixed opinion between the patients which strain it is. All we know that the higher CBD or THC has a medicinal effect and it's affecting uh, helping patients. But what's the real composition? And, and whether the other cannabinoids like CBG, uh, THCA and others, are they having effect or not? Nobody has done that study. Um, based on that, it's my interest. We are working with a uh, U.S. university uh, to try to isolate the individual cannabinoids and uh, terpenes. And uh, trying to see if independently they have any effect on human cells as well as the animal study and then we can add the cannabinoids one by one to each other to make a synergy and come up to define a proper study because uh, so far it's just a claim. It is, uh, as a drug to have a clinical study you have to have a market. Mm. With the cannabis which is a natural health product and having multiple components, what would be your market? Well, you, even as a market CBD, you're a doctor and you're, you're able a, to research. I'm a chemist. Chem, sorry, a chemist um, that, that works with um, this sort of research. It takes a research and development or a chemist like yourself, but for someone like the, to, to kind of research um, these areas. Uh, CBD, in my own opinion, is just something that it's been hyped up because it has low psychoactive. Now, for children, I think that's great. But it, for someone like myself that suffers mainly from anti-emetic, from the treatments that I take to stay mm -hmm. alive, they make me sick in the morning. CBD doesn't work for that. 
I think we've only isolated CBN, CBD, and THC and explored it medically anyway. Not on fair. their own. Again, anytime, and uh, there is a list in my book, uh, in, well, it's our brochure for, uh, for the company that we've identified one, two, three, uh, well, I can say CB, THC, CBD, CBN, and uh, THC, CB, and CBC, CBG, and also oh, getting into CBG. Okay. Yes. And so CBN, th these right. are the really the main seven or eight and uh, components that is literature there. So THCV, you're going right down into the full and flavonoids and terpenes. Yeah, we are trying to see whether it has it so on its own. What okay. effect does it have? Yeah. And I again, as a uh, experience in similar field and working on pheromones, uh, it's my strong belief. Uh, indication is, is a synergy effect. So. As you said, a high amount of uh, THC may make you sick, and maybe the CBD has shown a better effect as a medicinal. And if you look at that famous circular graph, it co shows CBD with a lot of treatments for it. Okay. How, do you feel, how do you feel about ti titration, Doc? Now, we learned that keeping cannabinoid levels up in the plasma, in the bloodstream, for the whole day, three doses a day, basically like any other medication. Uh, have you been researching? No, I'm not involved. No, I'm, even looking I, I'm not involved directly with the human test. That's a colleague of mine uh, who is a researcher and who is uh, uh, known as a European Union for the palliative medicine. They are, they are the ones they are doing it on the blood measurements and all. So that's not my expertise. My expertise is to isolate them chemically, find that the components are pure, and once we have isolated, then we can make our own synergistic mixture to see now that it's made from natural product, not synthesis, as you know, it's endocannabinoids. Then we want to demonstrate now that it's been separated, it, would it work or not? Would we get any response? If not, then we can add the other ones to it and see, mimicking the situation. So modulating the endocannabinoid system, which is what we're talking about here, and the full spectrum, using a holistic approach, I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm fascinated with some of the stuff that I've been hearing here today because, you know, like, there's so many unexplored. I'm glad you're exploring to isolate more, but there's so much that's unexplored. While we talk about marijuana for medical purposes, um, as a doctor or as a chemist, um, is there not a bit of a hypocrisy maybe that we've only had the three, well, the isolates like we're doing here, but we're, we just have so much unexplored to truly think that we have a handle on the medical part? I, I, um Personally, yeah. and Personal maybe opinion. professionally, I'm surprised that marijuana has been used over 2,000 years. It is a lot in different parts of the world, and nobody called it medicinal before. Now it's been called medicinal, and when we are, uh, we want to treat based on the new regulation as a medicine, yet there's a lot of gaps that uh, well, it's not medicinal practice. So uh, I'm lost with the regulations and how the way it's been treated, oh, but I'm a strong believer of quality, efficacy, and safety. So uh, uh, no matter which way, it has to be tested for that because we don't want to have a patient to get sick. Yeah. Okay. And uh, whether it should be medicinal or whether recreational, uh, uh, to be honest, it is, uh, you, in our social life, we are seeing people that are using it in the concerts, you see people using it, in, uh, and they don't call it medicine, mm -hmm. and yet it's the same thing. So uh, that's up to the politicians, how they want to define it and how they want to monitor it for the future. In closing now, um, preventative medicine, would you agree that cannabis is a form of preventative medicine if you maybe have <coughs> cancer or Parkinson's running in your family genetics? I, I don't think it's a preventive medicine personally. I think it's a pain relief and is a, uh, well, you can, like vitamins. Vitamins, you take it, but Preventive it's, medicine, it's pre right? it's, yeah, it is preventive. So it is, to my uh, understanding so far, the most focus has been on pain management, and uh, sort of um, balancing the nervous systems. And uh, my knowledge is not that extensive, call it. Uh, it's definitely it's not a cue, okay? Right. It is not a cue, so it has to be maintained. And it's like a painkiller or something to maintain it. So if you yeah, can call it a preventive medicine, that would be too. Well, that's All one right. of my new rallying calls. So stay tuned, everybody, for our next interview. Doc, thanks for Thank coming on. Much. It's been pleasure. a pleasure. Very informative. Thank uh, you very much. With you. Thank we'll you. see you in the next segue. Cheers.
Thanks. Right on. Cheers.